right, welcome to Global Management, the uh, final review. We'll go through this uh, quickly. Go ahead and print yours out or have some way to uh, copy down your notes. Feel free to fast forward and rewind as needed. All right, number one. In your words, describe what it means to live in a borderless economy. Right. So I kind of talked about that in class, but just give some of your own thoughts about what this means uh, and what are the implications of living in a borderless economy, right? And what does that mean? Right? Okay. And that's that was uh, one of the first videos that we did. Uh, all right, number two. List and describe the four stages of corporate evolution in terms of global expansion. So basically what I'm wanting there is, is we did an entire video on the four stages of growth that a company could go through, right? Um, and so I'll give you the uh, the four stages and then just write a, a brief description of each one so the first one is is domestic right so that's when your your most of your business is only just local right then you have international right? uh, where you're beginning to enter into some of those and you've got what's called a multinational and then you've got what's tr called a, a truly uh, global organization right? So those are the three state, four stages: domestic, international, multinational, and global. All right, number three. List and describe the four ways that an organization can be involved in global business. Right? Uh, so again, I'll give you I'll give you the four, but and then you, you're going to want to go in and be able to write uh, at least a little bit of a description about what each of these are. So you have exporting, right? you have outsourcing. You have licensing, and you have direct investing. Um, you know, and that direct investing—that's what I mean by that—is uh, building facilities, um, building facilities, uh, manufacturing places, those types of things in another country. So that's direct investing, actually building something in another country okay so those are the four exporting outsourcing licensing and then direct investing okay number four define ethnocentrism right so ethnocentrism that's the belief that your cultural ways of doing things are superior right the belief that your cultural ways of doing things are superior all right Number five, list and briefly describe. So I'm not wanting a big definition on these. I just want, you know, a, a small statement just so that I know that you know basically what each of these are. Um, so list and briefly describe four economic political treaties discussed in class. Right. Um, so the first one was the GATT, right? The General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade. Right, the GATT. So that was uh, the original World Trade Agreement following uh, World War II. Right? Um, the second one that we went over was the WTO. That's the World Trade Organization, and that is the the current uh, organizational body for world trade. Number three uh, was the European Union. Right. So that was the alliance created uh, between European nations for free trade. And then the fourth one that we went over was NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. And this is the free trade agreement between Mexico, Canada, and the United States so that any trade done here uh, between these countries within the North American continent is duty-free. Okay. Uh, number six, explain why statistics showing how many jobs have been lost overseas can be a bit misleading. Because a lot of times they don't factor in jobs that we've gained right so we, we've gained some knowledge worker jobs at the same time we've lost some manufacturing jobs and so it's you know if you just counted up all the jobs we've lost that's a bit misleading uh, because there's in some ways there's a balance that that we've lost a lot of manufacturing jobs overseas um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of knowledge worker jobs that have increased here and then the other thing is you're seeing uh, foreign countries view the United States as an excellent investment uh, location. And so they're 
they're sending their factories here, right? So we've lost a lot over there because of cheap labor, but we've gained a lot of factories in places like Toyota and things like that because they want the stability and the the proximity to the uh, to the largest buyer in the world is the American people. And so if they can get factories here, it saves them all kinds of money on shipping and, and all kinds of costs. And so there's a lot of foreign companies um, that have shipped their facilities here. Um, and so it's, it's not, uh, if you just counted up all the jobs that we lost, it doesn't really tell the full picture. So we have, we, you know, we are seeing losses, but it's, it's not quite as bad as if you just counted up all of these countries, or all of these jobs, rather, that have been shipped overseas if you don't factor in the ones that we've gained from overseas. All right, number seven, list and describe the three components of cultural intelligence. So I'll give you the three. It was cognitive, the, the thinking part, right? Then there was emotional, being emotionally stable during a global experience. And then the third was physical, um, dealing with the environment, dealing with your housing, dealing with the customs, dealing with uh, language barriers. So they're all... Those are all physical uh, elements that are factored in. Right? Okay. Number eight, explain the two basic stages of cultural learning. So we talked about a skills-based and a context-based. Skills-based refers more to the learning, the book knowledge, the studying that goes on um, prior to entering into a global environment. And then the context-based learning are those things that you absorb by being immersed in the culture. Right? Number nine, define expatriate. An expatriate is someone who is working in a country that is not their home country. Okay. Number ten, list and describe in your own words four cultural nuances that a manager must be aware of when they're managing globally. So in that last video that we did on, on management principles, I probably gave you eight or nine different interesting points I want you to, to go back in and, and put in your own words like four of them, right? So, I mean, we talked about um, labor laws. We talked about what motivates people. We talked about differences between cultures, saving face, different things like that. So, I, I, it's from that lesson, I want you to pull four points, put them in your own words, and let that be your answer for number 10, okay? Um, not a not a real long final, but but each one of these, there's, there's several that are, are four parters here, so it's a four part question. So it's a it's a decent final uh, in terms of the amount of work. It's kind of balanced. There's not a lot of questions, but there's there's at least three or four you're going to need to go back in and, and review your videos on. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me.